Although theoretically, I wrote these questions and I have written solutions for them at least once, you know, when I gave them as midterm exam questions. Um, but it's been a while and I didn't do any work to prepare for this session. So, um, so if I somehow mess up and are not able to, am not able to co answer correctly, um, I apologize. I'll try to redo it. <laughs> but I'm hoping whatever question I get that I can actually answer it correctly. So uh, we'll see. <laughs> uh, let me start. Uh, I have 20 minutes from this point on. All right, it says consider an infinite solenoid. Okay, okay, uh, I, make me feel better. And I, I like a, a application of Ampere's law question. Those are easier. <laughs> it, it's harder for me to forget those because it involves application of symmetry and all that. Um, so let me actually copy this uh, thing over so that I don't have to redraw the whole solenoid thing. Okay, uh, give your answers, yeah. Using Ampere's law, show that the magnet to the magnetic field inside the solenoid is that. <laughs> and I give you the answer so that if you simply give me the expression, like, okay, you get no credit for that. Uh, so let me start by stating the Ampere's law. Ampere's law says this. I'm gonna state the version with the mu naught first because uh, that's the version I have memorized. It says the line integral over a closed loop of b dot dl is equal to mu naught times current and closed. And because there's that uh, equivalence of mu naught is equal to 4 pi ke over c squared, in terms of the coefficients that I'm trying to use, it'll be 4 pi coulomb constant over their speed of light here for some reason, times i n closed. That's uh, Ampere's law. So in applying Ampere's law to find the magnetic field, you first need to have a sense of the direction of magnetic field. With the solenoid, uh, so let's see. I'm going to use the shortcut rule. So think of one of these uh, loop of current. So on the right, coming out of, no, going, so on the right, uh, going into the page, and on the left, going coming out of the page, okay. And in that direction, um, <laughs> the mag the thumb is pointing downward, so the magnetic field within the loop should be pointed downward. Let me just double check that from my perspective. Uh, yeah, okay, good. Um, and uh, if anything, if there's any magnetic field outside of the solenoid, it would be pointed upward. Although that's something you can actually prove that it's a zero. So um, from symmetry, there's a rotational symmetry and there's a translational symmetry. From symmetry, you can argue that the magnetic field within the solenoid is uniform. Um, um, or actually, it's, um, not quite. I, I don't think you can argue that. What you can argue so far is that magnetic field along this line is uh, constant. So if you are considering a different line, for example, here, then your magnetic field actually might be different because uh, uh, there's no symmetry operation with the rotation or translation that will take you from this point to that point. So that that particular bit actually needs additional step. But I have this uh, length of uh, space where I think my magnetic field is constant and that's good enough for me now. So let me consider this Amperian loop. The Amperian loop I'm considering, it'll go along the magnetic field here uh, so that I can accumulate um, B dot DL along this point. And then it's going to turn 90 degrees so that along this segment, I uh, accumulate no B dot DL. It's perpendicular 90 degrees. And then after going through here, I'm going to go all the way out to infinity. And only when I've reached the infinity, I'm going to turn, turn around and start going up this way. And because it's out at infinity, I can kind of take a guess that magnetic field here has to be zero. Um, it's, I can think of the solenoid looking like an infinite line of current from infinity away. It'll look zero-ish. So let me finish the thing here. So this is going to be my uh, Amperian loop. So this is a very beautiful loop in that the only segment that's contributing anything to this uh, uh, line integral is uh, this segment here. So I can write this down for A, that um, 
that the line integral of b dot dl is actually going to become a very simple integral. It's going to be um, the so it's going to be integral of magnetic field b uh, times a dl for this one segment. Um, and uh, I think I can actually write this rather simply. If I give a symbol for the this height of the loop, let me call that lowercase h, then because I think a magnetic field will be uniform along that length, I can say this integral is a simply going to be the magnetic field at that position times the height h. And we say this is equal to uh, 4 pi k over c squared times current and closed. And now I need an expression for current and closed. I have this uh, expression, I not, for current uh, per loop. And I believe I'm told uh, n, the, the loop density. So actually I can, um, so the, if I'm counting the number of loops, the number of loops would be the density times the height, uh, h here. That's going to be number of loops. So that times, um, so I naught times N H will give me the N close to current. So with that, I can write this uh, equation out. out. Um, I Left hand side, B times H is equal to right hand side. 4 pi K E over C squared times in, in closed current. I naught N H. And I see this beautiful cancellation. The arbitrary uh, parameter H cancels out. So I get the expression B is equal to 4 pi K E C squared I naught N. And that is the same expression as what we have here. You know, some ordering. So that's the correct answer. Now, if you stop here, you're only maybe two thirds of the way right, not full way right. Um, so what you have to uh, finish up is this argument that you have this uh, uh, expression for the magnetic field. And now you consider moving this uh, segment, you know, keeping this loop mostly intact, but moving it around a little bit. Maybe you want to uh, move this, uh, maybe you want to move this portion of the loop a little bit in. Now, here's the wonderful thing when you do. When you move it in, uh, you have changed where you are integrating over, but you haven't changed anything else. Current is the same, symmetry consideration is the same, which means this formula that we derived for a different location, it continues to apply. That's true wherever you put this segment. So that's the, that is the proof that magnetic field inside the solenoid must be uniform because it doesn't depend on where you put this. And um, as for magnetic field outside the solenoid being zero, you get that by moving this portion of the segment. When you move it, uh, because along this length the contribution was zero, you can move this all the way in right up until here without changing anything. So which means, um, so the, the, the line integral is the same and that can only be true if the magnetic field immediately outside the solenoid is zero. So, so that's the last bit of argument you have to make to say one, inside field is uh, uniform at this strength and immediately outside it's zero. So, um, so, so, um, so ampere uh, magnetic field inside the solenoid points downward, ampere loop of a rectangular shape um, going along the magnetic field inside the solenoid and the horizontal segment the perpen particular to the B field uh, was chosen for argument um, using uh, Ampere's law. Um, the symmetry considerations uh, give uh, um, line integral simply bind to B times H where H is the... Okay, I have 10 minutes. Let me go more quickly. Uh, okay, find the direction and magnitude of force on each loop to two solenoid wire. Huh? 
Oh, I see. Um, so let me copy and paste this. I'll be a little bit more sparse with the explanations. So I think I might be running out of time. Uh, so in B, uh, so let me start with this. Um, so I have this magnetic field. And inside the field, within the loop, B is what I derived. Uh, 4 pi K E over C squared and I naught. Now, immediately outside where magnetic field could have been going the other way, magnetic field is actually zero. So there's this uh, legitimate question of what is the magnetic field, effective magnetic field along this point where there's an abrupt transition from this value to zero. And that's why it's giving this hint. If the magnetic field is very different, not smoothly different from the magnetic on the other side, also the effective field is the average. So for the B effective, based on that hint, I'm going to say B effective is this thing divided by 2. So 2 pi Ke over C squared and I naught. That's uh, what I'm going to say is the magnetic field at all the points on the loop along the solenoid, you know, the loop looking like this. So now let's uh, figure out the force. So direction, direction and magnitude of force on each loop. Okay. Um, why do I have to say per length? Um, I don't think I have to say per length. Do I have? Yeah, I have a radius R. So uh, I don't think I need to say per length. So really all I'm trying to do is I have, let me draw the top down view. I have um, a ring like this. And in the top down view, uh, so this uh, current was coming out. So current was pointed this way. This is the direction of current. And the magnetic field was uh, pointed uh, downward. So when I view from top, it'll be going into the page and it's everywhere. So I can do uh, the, the magnetic force on a current carrying wire is the amount of current times the L as the uh, vector cross with the B. So I can do I, IL cross B. So um, let me do it on, uh, let me do it on this side. So the left hand side, so um, current is going up magnetic field is pointed into the screen. So doing IL cross uh, B, I get a force that's pointing, um, pointing to left. And uh, as I imagine going around and doing that, force will always be kind of pointed outward this way. So, um, Yeah, yeah, let me just do it from my perspective to be sure. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, so it, I think it, since uh, the current and magnetic field is perpendicular, I think the... Um, so, I guess uh, it's saying per length, because if I'm simply adding this all up, it's going to be zero, you know, net force adds up to zero. But you can think about pressure, the kind of pressure pulling it out, then that will be Fb of uh, I times B. Um, so this Fb per length will be I times B. Yeah. So let's uh, put it this way. So I'm going to say uh, Fb per length is equal to current times B since uh, I is uh, perpendicular to B uh, figures in attached to work. Um, and the direction is uh, pushing the loop outward right, as if to make radius larger. All right, uh, got six minutes, okay, part C. Suppose that particle, okay, uh, can I do just copy image? Oh, wow, yeah, it worked. Okay, so I have that. And let's see, enters the solenoid, somehow it passes, yeah. Uh, okay, describe the path of the particle after it enters the solenoid, assuming that. Okay, uh, let's just start with the magnetic field direction that we already know. Of that, um, and the Q is yeah positive. Okay, uh, 
So let's just start by working out V cross B. So V uh, cross B. By the way, um, because both V and B are in the plane, the force will be perpendicular to the plane. You are really only choosing between is the force perpendicular going into the screen or is the force perpendicular coming out of the screen. That's all you are choosing. And when you do right hand rule, V cross B, the thumb is pointed out of the screen. So the choice that uh, holds is just the one that's going out of the screen. Just do it from my perspective. So uh, as the particle is coming in right now here, it's uh, experiencing force that's uh, pushing it out this way. So it'll uh, start to bend outward this way. So uh, it'll have a, like a circular component that I think it goes like this. Out of screen here. And then once it comes around and it's going this way, then it'll be going, uh, the force will be going into the screen, you know, uh, uh, V cross B into the screen. Yeah. yeah. So, so, um, so the actual path of the particle will look something like a helical thing like this. Um, that will be the actual path of the particle. So, discrete path, assuming uh, discrete path both qualitatively and quantitatively, okay. So, um, qualitatively, uh, path will appear helical uh, with the component of the velocity along uh, B uh, remaining constant. So, um, uh, that would be like this would be V not parallel, that's constant, and there will be component uh, V not perpendicular. Um, the, along the B remain constant. And the speed for the component the perpendicular B will be constant, but the direction will change in a way consistent with it uniform circular motion in 2D. Um, uh, up here, uh, 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 looking from above, the helical path uh, above, meaning a uh, particle moving away from viewer. The helical path will, um, path will appear um, Let's see. So that this is coming out of the page into. So just imagining rotating this shape in your head. <laughs> so looking at it from above, this will be this way. This will be that way. So it will be counterclockwise. The so helical up here, uh, counterclockwise. Quantitatively, um, the radius uh, will be consistent with the. Cyclotron motion radius. We'll work it out later. Where the V is the component of a velocity perpendicular to the uh, magnetic field. So that will be given by V naught uh, sine theta. V naught sine theta. And I gave this this question because I think as I work it out the uh, I might run out. So let's uh, work out the, um, the cyclotron motion thing. Um, so I have this radius R that I'm trying to work out. And this says the component of velocity in this view. That's V naught sine theta. Um, and there's magnetic field perpendicular to it, um, kind of into the page, it's out of the page, into the page uh, this way. Yeah. So that V cross. Yeah, 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 okay, it all works. So uh, this is what I have to write down. The magnetic force is going to be Q, the this component V naught sine theta times B. And this should be equal to the, the centripetal force, M V naught sine theta squared over R. I'm just ignoring the the whole, the, the, the the, the parallel component, I can do that. Uh, you can also do like shift of a, a reference frame. So solving for R, R here is uh, one factor of that cancels. It's uh, 
and we now sign theta over QB. That's R. Do I have time to type it in? Okay, yeah, I do. Um, the cyclotron motion radius is R is equal to M times V naught sine theta divided by QB. Now, unfortunately, I won't have the solutions to uh, display to you right now. <laughs> um, although, uh, I can do this. I can uh, bring up the uh, solution of the question that this came out of and um, show you that and compare that. I, I think I can do that. Um, so uh, let me let the time run out and then I will attach my work um, and then um, and then I will go uh, dig up the solution and see if I made a mistake or uh, uh, see if I made a mistake then or now. <laughs> So let me attach the work. And with the work, again, my recommendation to you is that you should take some time to organize your work. Here, I did try to keep it a little bit organized, but some of the things, like the symmetry thing, I said it out loud. I didn't write it down. In your case where, you know, you didn't have me nearby listening to you as you were speaking to yourself. So you should actually have your reasoning written down. Um, either typed in your answer or written out in some legible format in your work. So, uh, oh, I didn't write C. Let me write C. So I need to write uh, part C here. Okay, save work and continue. And when I do review work, I can um, look at my answers and also view my work. And if I uh, want you to change my work for some reason, I can just uh, refresh this page. Um, and there will be an add work button that I can use to access and change work. So uh, let me go look up the, uh, the past uh, um, past uh, midterm exam that this question is out of. It'll take a little bit of time. Let me just do that on my second screen. Uh, ah, this is the one, okay. So let me bring this up. Yeah, uh, uh, kind of lucky, could have taken longer. So this is the um, solution from then. It comes from an old uh, midterm exam question that I called the solenoid and charge the particle. And you consider a finite infinite solenoid. Um, yeah, that, this is the drawing, the argument. Like, okay, A couldn't possibly have been wrong. Because <laughs> with A, you know, there's a kind of answer you can double check. So, okay, A is good. Let's look at B, the direction and magnitude. So, yeah, here I did the left wire, right wire, enough to figure out, um, so your, um, your uh, magnetic force will be pulling the things outward. So there is an outward force for each point in the wire. And I'm saying, um, oh, did I not? Uh, yeah, so I guess uh, um, the part that I kind of miss <laughs> is I should have written out what the uh, this B effective was. And I definitely didn't write it out in the answer. So uh, if you're just looking at the answer, like uh, this is a kind of leaving uh, holes <laughs> this is where if so if i'm looking at student response like this that will be what i'm wondering what value of b are you using and then as i look at the attach the work if i say something like this then i'll say okay you know what you're doing you just forgot to plug this into here so uh, now when you look at the um, the the past solution so yeah there's the factor of two for using the average magnetic field so yeah, well, I know squared. All right, so there's that. And here's the uh, one here. And yeah, helical path, I think I got it right. On the far side, it's coming um, It's coming out of the screen. And did the path got erased? Oh, I used to have path drawn. Uh, what happened? Did it remain here at least? No, I think a path must have gotten erased before I uh, 
Oh, yeah, that's annoying. So just so that people remember what that looked like, I drew the path like this. Um, where it, oh, I, I think it's uh, taking like an erase action. That must be why. But anyways, um, so check for things like that before you uh, submit your work. And uh, so, yeah, I got the path right. So helical path uh, located from the top of the solenoid. Oh, yeah, and the rest, the... There's the drift speed, that's the component of velocity parallel to the magnetic field. Uh, the radius circle, you use that, yeah. yeah. So I think I got that part right. So, so yeah, that's the one demonstration of the free-form timed assessment. Um, and um, 